demonstrating today is a um, patient who has a swan dance catheter and we'll be demonstrating how to zero that catheter, um, the ports of the catheter, and how to obtain a hemodynamic, hemodynamic profile. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the swan dance catheter. It's also called a pulmonary artery catheter. And this is the standard one that you will see most often. It is called a VIP. And the VIP just means that it has this extra port, which is called the white proximal port. And it is looped up, and it goes into a triple lumen introducer. The triple lumen introducer is not the only introducer that can be used. You can use a single lumen introducer. However, she has the triple. It is fed through the uh, center port of that and then on the opposite sides of either of it, it has uh, two ports which will be referred to as a cordis or an introducer port. And those uh, end up in the right atrium. The swan dance catheter is fed down in through the patient through the right atrium, through the right ventricle, and sits in the outflow tract of the pulmonary artery. It's connected over here to a pressurized heparin bag, and the ports that are connected to pressure are the PA distal, which is yellow, and the proximal injectate port, also known as the CVP, or the right atrial port. Those come back here to the transducers, which are connected to the pressurized bag. And basically the pressurized bag has a pressure that is about 300 millimeters of mercury. And that enables the heparin to infuse at approximately three cc's per hour just to keep the uh, end of the ports open because there's no infusion going through these. Um, this is the standard uh, two units per ml heparin. And it's connected here. At the bottom of these uh, transducers, you see that they're connected to a pressure cable. And then, of course, the pressure cable comes up to the monitor and goes into each module. And on this monitor, it is set up that the first one is the arterial pressure, the second one is the pulmonary artery pressure, and the third one is the CVP pressure. In order to obtain accurate readings and waveforms, you need to zero these lines to the patient's phlebostatic axis. And you'll need a level. You can just use a regular carpenter's level. And what you need to do, ideally you want to have the patient lift up their arm, um, but for filming purposes it will be easier to see you try to obtain um, a mid-axillary point, fourth and fifth intercostal space, and see that that levels up to the level at these transducers where they open to air so that you can level against atmospheric pressure. Once you're sure that this is the appropriate level, you need to be able to tell the monitor to level from, or to measure from this level. So what you need to do is turn the stopcocks off to the patient, and off to the patient is to the pressure. The patient has a pressure, and so you need to turn them off to the patient. And then this one is set, that it goes up. And you need to open each of these stopcocks to air. And at this point, you're going to tell the monitor to zero these transducers against atmospheric pressure at this level. You come up to the monitor here, and on this monitor, it's under procedures. And you go to procedures, and it says zero all pressures. Press that. And after reading the screen, screen you can tell it just says press confirm to zero all pressures. You press confirm, and all of these lines will go to zero. It tells you when it's done. 
And at that point, you put the caps back on. And you turn the stop cock off to the caps. And you should have a return of your waveforms. Now, in order to obtain a hemodynamic profile, you first want to get um, print out strips of each of your waveforms and to ensure that your measurements manually reflect the measurements on the monitor. At that point, you need to probably write down um, the patient's pressures um, on a little alcohol swab or whatnot, just so that you can remember them to plug in once you're doing the hemodynamic profile. You then come to here, and a hemodynamic profile is done with a room temperature injected. And what this catheter does is it measures how fast something room temperature goes through the end of the catheter. It then takes into account patient's pulmonary artery pressures and can give you resistance that it had to go against. We use uh, 10 cc's of sterile injectate, whether it's D5W or uh, normal saline. And it's in this kind of bag with uh, this spike on it, and it just has a clip uh, lock on it. And this is a one-way valve on the injectate. This injectate connects to the blue port with the right atrial port, central venous port, off to the side port of this cox, stop cock. You want to take these caps off. And connect these. And be sure to keep these caps as clean as possible. Then you need to take a temperature probe, and this is so that the monitor can see the temperature of the injectate that's hanging up here. You plug it into this little side port on the injectate. And now you want the monitor to see this injectate go through the patient. It doesn't need to see this pressure. This is where it's going to be reading it from. So you need to take your stop cuff and turn it off to the monitor because now it will only see what comes from here into the patient. At this point, you come back up to your monitor and you tell it you're going to do another procedure. And this is cardiac output. And we can start from here. What you do is you open up this clamper and you slowly withdraw 10 cc's and that's coming directly from here. This is a one-way port so that when you inject this back through, it does not go back up into the bag. It goes directly to the patient. What you need to do first is inject about one cc of this in through the port so that this temperature probe can assess the temperature of the injectate. Um, you can get a skewed reading if you don't let the monitor adjust to the temperature of the injectate. And you can see it right here on the monitor. And this is the temperature of the injectate. And as you can see, it's lowering right now as I put a couple of cc's through that. And this is in comparison to the patient's core body temperature, which is 37.6, and that's in Celsius. At this point, um, you're going to be starting your hemodynamic profile. And what you want to do is a series of three injections. And the monitor will tell you at what point it's ready to start the next one. And this is to ensure that you have a trend that are within 10% of each other to get an accurate uh, cardiac output this patient. And 
challenge, your goal is to inject this 10 cc's in no greater than 4 seconds in a smooth and steady motion. Um, ideally, it should be on end expiratory. So what you need to come over here to the monitor is push the button that says start cardiac output. And you don't start it until you, you hear the beep and read the simultaneous message on the screen that says inject now. here to the heart monitor, what you should see is a nice steady upswing of this slope and a nice gradual downsloping over 10 seconds. If your patient's height and weight has already been programmed into the computer, you will get a cardiac output as well as a cardiac index estimation. It is based on body surface area, and the monitor does all the calculations for you as long as you input the correct information. It's telling you here, wait before starting new measurement, ready for new measurement. At that point, you come back over to here, and you unclamp this clamp, draw up 10 more cc's. It's not necessary to reclamp um, because you do have a one-way valve here. Come back to the monitor, press start cardiac output, and inject when it says inject now. And what you want to do is try to keep your injections over uh, under four seconds and as consistent as the one that you did prior to that. And what we like to do is get do three so that you can have a accurate trend. And so we'll get ready to do our last one. The monitor is ready. And you're going to hit start cardiac output and inject now. You are done with this um, portion of the catheter, and so you can turn your stop cock now back off to the injector. And you can replace the caps. If you are going to be doing frequent cardiac outputs, it's okay to leave this connected. But if it's only every eight hours, it's a good idea to disconnect this. This is quite a heavy piece of equipment that can pull on the catheter. So I'll leave it connected right now. And now the rest of your human monitor profile you're going to be obtained from the monitor itself. What you need to do is go to the edit feature. And this is to see all of your waveforms that you inject to the patient. And what you like to see is the consistency of the three. If they are not within 10% of each other, you should delete it so that you get a better average. And if you choose to put that one back on the screen by hitting delete again, it will bring it back. Get rid of this one. It's, it's out of the range of these last two. And it tells you what to do next. Press confirm to store average when edit is done. So you press the confirm button. And now you need to go to the hemodynamic calculation. And on the sides of the monitors, you'll have a keypad that you're going to input all of your information. Now this is where your little alcohol swab comes in handy so that you can see your patient's vital signs if they're not already stored in here that you can see what you need to plug into the monitor. If they are appropriate, you can just scroll down and, or up and make sure it is what the patient's pressures were. And because we did not obtain a pulmonary artery with wedge pressure, I'm going to leave that blank. Zero is not acceptable to put in there 
because you truly could have a zero pressure of your pulmonary artery pressure, and that will change your hemodynamic profile. So if you don't do one, don't put a number in there. Um, the PAD is often a reflection of the pulmonary artery wage pressure. However, if you have um, a complication such as um, pulmonary hypertension, your pulmonary wedge pressure is not a reflection, or your PAD is not a reflection of your wedge pressure, I should say. So I'm just going to leave that blank. And then her central venous pressure, it was 10. And anytime you input a number or change one, you need to press confirm. Otherwise, if by skipping it, it will revert back to the number that was previously there. And then the height and weight um, were already programmed in here. And the height is calculated into centimeters here. So now what you want to do is press the button that says perform the calculation. And if you'd like to see what the normal range is for these numbers, you can put ranges on and off. And then what you'll want to do is print this calculation. The reason that you have these blanks here, such as for pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance index, is because you didn't put in a wedge, a wedge pressure. If you had that, these would also be um, computed by the computer. It's important on your hemodynamic profile to put on there any um, vasoactive infusions that your patient's on, and if your patient's on any in any rhythm other than a sinus rhythm, it's a good idea to put that on there. Um, and then once you're leaving the patient, you can just disconnect this um, injector so that it's um, not pulling on the swan gans catheter. This, um, just for demonstration purposes, this is the port for the wedge pressure. And this is a special um, syringe that is hooked to it that you can only pull back to one and a half cc's and that is to ensure that by inflating the balloon that's at the end of this catheter you don't over inflate it and potentially rupture it causing an air embolus. We leave these in the closed position and the um, locked and that's to ensure that uh, no air is mistakenly uh, put in this port or left in this port. And you could tell if your patient's balloon was inflated by a change on the waveform of the PA waveform. The other lines? The other lines, this is a um, this is the PA distal, which is sitting in the pulmonary artery. Nothing is ever infused in this. This is just for pressure uh, only. We don't draw blood off this. Um, it's always kept connected. There are rare cases which you will be asked to draw a mixed venous gas, and this is the port that you use, but you need a physician order for that. And that's connected to? This is connected to the pressure bag, mm -hmm. and it's labeled PA distal, and it's color-coded yellow, goes to yellow. And this is the CVP port, or right atrial port, or proximal injectate port where we just did our hemodynamic profile. And it also goes back to the same pressure bag. And as you can see, they have uh, dual spikes on them. And one is feeding each pressured line. This is the white proximal port. And the white proximal port comes out just above the CVP port in the right atrium. It is a central line. Um, you can put infusions through this, and we just have a Christmas tree on that to put multiple infusions through this. Um, you can, um, if you need an extra port where something is not compatible uh, here, you could use the CVP port as an infusion port. That is the only pressurized port that you can use for infusions. And then, of course, on the introducers, these are also central lines and you can use them for infusions as well.